Because you guys liked my previous video so much about the new Arnold uh, 6.2 update, today I will be showing you how to set everything up in Houdini to get the images to work. And if you want to have the scene to play around and test the images in Houdini yourself, you can find those scene files on my Patreon, the link is in the description below, so feel free to check it out and play around with the scene files yourself. And before we get going, I want to make you guys aware about my um, growing Discord community, the CG Lounge, it's growing by the day. And we are having now CG challenges where we start in modeling, we go to look depth surfacing and we go to lighting rendering. So be sure to check out my Discord community, the link is in the description below. We're almost at 3.5 thousand users so it's growing quite fast. So thanks again for everyone who joined. So now let's jump into Houdini so I can show you guys how to use the new Arnold Imagers in Arnold 6.2. All right, I just want to give you a quick overview of how I set up the whole scene. So essentially, I started off with uh, the import of the mesh, painted a few attributes, and then I went into the skeleton to get the rig. After that, I used the rig pose to create the, the placement and the, um, the, the posture of the, the creature. Once I was happy with that, I was going into shading, um, starting off with a few noises to get the initial shaping of the glow. And then I was just creating several more smaller nodes to control the bump maps and the displacement maps. And after that, I went into the outdrop to start out with the out of imagers. So what you have to do is go into the out um, context here, uh, find your Arnold render drop, and then in, in this create an imager context, just like that image builder. And then what you got to do in the Arnold um, settings here, jump over to output and make sure that you drop or drag it into imagers and create that images subdirectory right within here. And that's essentially all you have to do to get things up and running. So now um, what we can easily do is let's just create um, our first one, which is the light mixer, uh, create that and hook it up and then just restart the render to actually get everything working. And you might wonder how I do get these AUVs in here or these lists. So in each slide you have the contribution tab and then you have the AUV light group. And in here I was just creating ENV, rim light, kick light, heat light, and the disc light, which um, has a spotlight name. Back again in the Arnold imagers, um, they will populate this list. So now let's see how we can control it. All right, I started the IPR and once the render is done, we can freely change those settings without the need of needing to re-render your image. Okay, so let's say I want to disable my environment light. I can just quickly uh, click that checkbox and it's disabled. And I can do that for all the lights like that you can see the overall contribution. So now we only have our beauty pass, which is the emission and our um, glow here in the background. So let's say I want to create this um, the spotlight, which is essentially responsible for the glow, which we cannot really tweak. But then let's say the backlight. So I, let's say I want to make it strong. I can just push the exposure and you can see now this is all happening after the render. I can interactively maybe change the saturation. Let's say I want to push it up a little bit. So now it's a bit more red or I can tint it to be a bit more yellow. So that's pretty nice. And then we can do the same with the kick light, which is a blue one. I think it should be a bit more in, in a teal color, maybe a bit more greenish. And we can also crank up the exposure just to make him pop a little bit more. Um, increase um, saturation and maybe switch to like a more greenish tone maybe something like that it definitely makes him stand out a bit more and then the heat light is the light which is for his belly so we can also crank that up if we need to just to get the illusion that he's actually glowing and illuminating the surface around him and then we have the environment light if we need it I'm not sure if it adds much to it so uh, maybe I, I'll just um, kind of reduce it by two stops so it's not really active and this is already quite quite a difference, right? If you compare this now from before and after, um, it already makes the render pop a lot more and it's quite fast to just get to where you need to go. So now let's talk about the next imager. Let's bring in the light bloom in here, which is called um, a lens effects. So we can just drop it and you always have to restart the render once you connect new nodes uh, because it needs to compute certain parameters. And let's also create a color correct node um, before actually the lens effects because this will create our glow. Let's do maybe some color corrections before this. And um, now you obviously you just change and chain them together like I do and then you can control them after. So let's just start a new render. All right, so now maybe let's just lift the blacks a little bit so you can go into the color correct node, go into maybe shadows, go to offset and just lift it a little bit. And you can see now it's obviously like an Instagram filter where you can use a fade effect. And this is quite similar to what, what they're doing on the app. 
and you can now see it's a little bit more um, lifted it's not super crunchy but you can also maybe add a bit more contrast overall which makes it even stand out more so the blacks get richer which i think makes them even more interesting to look at um, so now in the lens effects you have two options for now it's the vignetting and the bloom so i like vignetting it kind of mimics the lens because if you have, have like a low focal length you can see the the lens essentially um, shadowing the sensor so if i increase that this is a bit much i guess but you can already see now just by adding lens uh vignetting you can really make focus or create focus where you want to direct your view you can do that in here and then let's talk about bloom which is a glow so you can obviously increase the strength and then you can see here you will just start to glow strength is essentially how much how, how bright it is threshold is if you reduce it more pixel will start to glow it's based on brightness so it's, it's very low everything will just glow and the higher you make it only super hot pixels will start to create that bloom and i want only the hot pixels to create it radius is how far it spreads so if i do 50 you should see the glow is all over the place which i definitely want but i want to control it so i will reduce the strength uh, the strength maybe 2.05 so now it's a very subtle glow maybe the radius is a bit much and then you just need to dial it in until you are happy with the result. Uh, maybe reduce the radius even more. Now it's just around the eyes. And I kind of like this effect. It's quite subtle, but it's still visible. And it's a nice glowy effect. And you can obviously tint it if you want the glow to be more magenta. You can give this like this rich red um, and lots of different kind of settings. And then the last thing which I didn't add is the denoising, which is quite powerful, but it takes a bit to compute. So you potentially in the end, you want to create this um, denoise and noise, and you want to hook that up in between your render here. And this will essentially denoise your image in the interactive render session. So all you got to do is play around with the variance here, and it will create you a smooth, clean image. You can see how noisy this is now. Let's just start the render. All right, as you can see, it's quite noisy still. So what we gotta do is just increase the variance maybe to 0.5. You can see now already we got rid of most of the noise we had before and you can crank it up. Like it depends exactly how much you need it to be adjusted, but um, different obviously settings will have a different result. So 0.8 might be too much for you. But now on a 0.8 variance, you can see that all my depth of field noise is gone. It's completely clean now. And this is quite powerful because you can see the essentially the final result after denoising right in your interactive render session. All right, so that sums up the imagers. I hope you understand how to set it up. It's quite straightforward, honestly. And obviously there are way more images to play around with. I didn't showcase everyone because I think most of them are quite um, self-explanatory. Um, again, check out my Discord community. It's great. And thanks everyone for joining and watching this video. Please leave me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.